everyone! Thank you for tuning in. Today I'm going to be going over everything I got in my e.l.f. haul. I did an order from their website. It came way faster than I was expecting, which is exciting. It's not a huge haul, but it's definitely some of their newest stuff. Not a full face worth of stuff, but I am going to apply the things that I have. And I got to tell you guys, I coached my first cheerleading practices yesterday. Two of them, four hours of cheer. I'm still tired. My voice is a little bit hoarse. I'm helping out coach my girl squad so it's a tiny and a mini squad. They're little and I love them but it's, it's so different from school and college cheer. You know like I never cheered at that age and even though I have kids that age it's just different working with a massive amount of them and just the different skills and things. It's different but I really like it and I'm just I'm happy to be helping. I'm just volunteering. And at the end of practice one little girl was like which one is your daughter? Like and so I thought yay I did my job. I didn't show any preferential treatment. I'm just you know trying to help everybody and they're all so sweet and I just I love them. First thing I got is this liquid poreless putty primer. So this is in the universal sheer. It just comes in this one option. It says get some lasting makeup grip and smooth finish of fan favorite poreless putty primer now in a silky weightless liquid. Um, and they do say to allow 30 seconds for it to set before your makeup application. So poreless putty primer when it first came out it's sold in the little disc. You dip into it and it was kind of solid and it had to sort of work into the skin. There was a little bit of a feeling of drag across the skin. And then I remember they put out a putty primer in their Cookies and Dreams collection and I felt like, whoa, that one's nice and silky smooth. I really like that formula. And then some more time passed. I did another e.l.f. order and as a free gift they put in like three different varieties of their mini poreless putty primers and they were all smooth and creamy. Very similar to Cookies and Dreams. So I feel like they've improved their solid, we'll call it the solid formula over time. And now we have it in a squeezy tube in a totally different consistency. So I've worn this for about the past three days. Yesterday during the cheerleading practice it was hot in the gym. I was sweating but when I came home I looked at my makeup and I thought it's really hanging on still. Like I, I totally still look like I had a full face of makeup. Now the foundation I was wearing on top I knew it could be a long day so I used Too Faced Born This Way Matte. That is on my list of like indestructible foundations. Um, today I'm going to try putting an e.l.f. product on top. I'm going to try putting Camo CC Cream on it. And one of the other days I used NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop on top of it and that wore really well also. So um, these are long wearing foundations so I do credit the foundations but I guess it's nice to see that something I know to be long wear isn't being negatively affected by this at least. But I can't say like oh this caused the super long wear. So I'm going to get just a small amount here. We can see it's it's running down my finger. Like it's not a water weight consistency, but it's so much thinner than normal poreless putty primer. And I'm going to get it around on here and I'm just going to smooth it in. It smooths in with ease. Um, definitely smoother than like the power grip primers that e.l.f. puts out. Goes on really, really easily and you do have this kind of smoothing feel. And then they say to let that sit on your skin for 30 seconds. So we'll talk about it some more and 30 seconds will definitely pass. At this point in time, and I say this a lot with some of these pore filling primers, I do have a bit of a sunburn on my nose here, but I can look up close and I can still see some pores. You know, this isn't maybe the moment where you see your pores reduced, but it's once your foundation goes on top, you can kind of realize somewhat what that primer did. But the ease of application is really nice. So I would have to say on this primer, so far so good for me. I feel like I have an abundance of different foundations that I could pair with this and see like okay am I getting a different experience with some lightweight things? Am I experiencing improved staying power out of some things that maybe didn't last as well on me in the past? So I'm going to continue pairing this with different things but today I'm going to pair it with an e.l.f. product and this is my camo CC cream. I wear this in the shade light 210N and I've always liked this product. It does have nice coverage and it also contains SPF 30. It has collagen peptides and niacinamide. So I've got a pump of that and I'm going to dot this around on the skin and just blend it in with my e.l.f. duo complexion brush. Gosh I hope they never get rid of that brush. We're going to finally tone down the redness on my nose. <laughs> I always forget but yeah one pump is usually more than enough. I had to take some excess off my finger just then. 
Even though this isn't a new product in my haul, I just wanted to kind of put the foundation on and assess with you how it's looking on top of this primer. would have to say I'm seeing kind of a reduction in pores. I know where I normally see them kind of here on the sides of my nose and then kind of right in here on the cheek. If you look up close at my face, I think you can see there's a smoothness here. Coverage seems really even. I'm not noticing any sort of patchiness anywhere. Again, this is really new to me, but I would have to give it a rating of so far so good with everything I've used it with. Um, I can't remember what foundation did I first pair it with. It was something light or weight. Oh, I paired it with House Labs. And I remember thinking, oh, that looks good. I was looking up close at it. I was kind of assessing like I am today. Day, but then I took that look off about midday because I was swimming and I don't really like to swim in my makeup so I can't say how that worked all day long but yeah looking good today thank you Elf. and another thing I think I'll just talk about it at this stage of the game because if I'm thinking of using a lip exfoliator as kind of like early on in the routine and then maybe you let some balm sit on your lips and soften things up they have repackaged their lip exfoliators and put out some new um, scents or flavors so I got the classic brown sugar one and this is what it looks looks like. It's like more of a slim design. The old ones looked like this, more of a standard lipstick bullet. And I've always loved the e.l.f. lip exfoliators and I've never had an issue with them like falling apart or getting too soft or getting too mushy on the lips. But what they've done here now is nice. Hi biscuits. Yeah, well, it's nice because they've got this tube hugging the bullet. So that way it has some extra support. Whereas with the other one, if you did press a little too hard with it, if you got a little too aggressive with it, maybe some people found the stick moving a bit. Personally, it's not anything I saw a need to improve, but this probably is a little bit better packaging design. And it shows off the fact that there are different scents because you can see that color there. So I got the classic brown sugar one. Um, it just has kind of a sweet smell. To me, it really smells just like the regular brown sugar one they had before. I also got the one called popcorn because I'm the kind of person who actually likes like a buttered popcorn jelly belly so I can get into a fake popcorn smell. Oh, and it really, it's so good. It's strange. You take a whiff and you get that little element of saltiness that you're smelling somehow. Um, you do totally think popcorn and I used it the other day and what you'll notice at first is yes there is a little balm that you're gonna wear through to get to the grit but once you get to that grit it holds its own, it doesn't start to crumble and you can really rub back and forth and get some exfoliating action on your lips. So I was pleased with that and I actually do really like that scent. And then the other one I chose was called coffee and so this one I'm going to be using for the first time today and ooh, that smells good smells good very authentic seeming okay as I first go across I can tell yes there's some grit in this stick but I am wearing through a little bit of balm to get there so a lip exfoliator is just like this gritty exfoliating scrub embedded in a lip balm and after you get through that initial application you will immediately feel a lot of grit Okay, now I'm feeling a very, very gritty texture across my lips. I've always thought e.l.f. lip exfoliators were the best lip exfoliators I've used, and I've used higher end ones too. Because I've done that initial application, can you see my lips looking a little bit milky? Because there's so much balm on. The next time I use this, let me see if it'll show on camera, it's going to go straight to the grit. Yes, some balm will be hitting my lips, making it kind of a softening experience as well. You know, you will get some balm. But right now the grit is there and it is dense and it's not something where, okay, you've got to just put it on your lips and the kinds in a pot are just so so troublesome to me because then it's like you're going around with your finger and you're trying to get everything exfoliated. Here, this stick does it. I can feel that exfoliating happening just because the stick is so gritty. Coffee scent is a two thumbs up for me. Now I'm going to remove some of that excess and you can see my lips immediately have more color in them. Not just because we may have wiped off a little foundation that was sitting on there, but there's just like more circulation. They always look more plump and more rosy after using a lip scrub. So I would have to say even though I wasn't having any issues with the e.l.f. lip exfoliators before this, I think they did make an improvement with that packaging design. And fortunately the stick itself works just as well as it ever did to exfoliate the lips. So I'm happy with that. 
Then I got one of these Squeeze Me lip balms, and there was only one scent available, and it was peach. And fortunately, this one smells really, really good. But this seems like a very small lip balm. You're getting 0.21 ounces in it, and it kind of reminds me of the Laneige, and in those you're getting 0.35 ounces. Those are also more expensive, but you just have a squeezy tube balm here. I'm gonna get some out. I don't really like running those across my lips. That peach smell is really pure and really nice. I'm glad that that was what was available to me. Just running it across the lips. I think after you exfoliate, you always want to put something moisturizing on there. And then it can just sit there on your lips as you do the rest of your makeup look. Or maybe you just want to wear something like this throughout the whole day. It feels great. It feels nourishing. It's not greasy. It's hanging on the lips. It feels to me a lot like the texture of my Laneige. And yeah, my lips are just feeling awesome right now. So I'm going to go on and do a few more steps in my face makeup because my next new thing pertains to eyes. All right, guys, I'm back. Also, I wanted to say, as I was looking back on the website, there is a putty color correcting eye brightener. And when I placed my order for this stuff, it was out of stock. And now it looks like it might be in stock. So I will still try to get and try that. But just to update you on what I've done with my skin so far. I've put on concealer. I use the NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop in vanilla. I set that with my Laura Mercier Ultra Blur Loose Powder. And then as my contour, I was sent this in PR, the ColourPop Bronze Sticks, and this is the shade Moonstone Beach. So I used that. It actually blended in really nicely around my hairline and as a cheekbone contour. And then my blush is the Essence Pure Nude Baked Blush. This is the shade Bold Heart. That's one of my favorite shades in that line. And then I just did my brow. I put on some Milani eyeshadow primer and next we're going to talk about these eyeshadow palettes. I could call them new but they're not purely new. They're calling these the Perfect 10 eyeshadow palettes and they do charge $10 for them. Now keep in mind if you're looking to hard candy, if you're looking to Rimmel, you can find some good 10 color eyeshadow palettes here and there in those lines and they will cost you less than $10. For example from hard candy I've been very pleased with the going nude never looking back and also the Play With Fire one. So just throwing that out there. But with these from e.l.f., I ordered three different shades. This light, colorful, and sparkly one is called Intergalactic. I've never known that one to have been released before. If it was, I missed out on it, but um, this one is 100% new to me. Then I got Summer Breeze. This one is kind of like a warm, all matte palette, and they did have this one before, and I will show you a side-by-side. -side. And I also got Rose Gold Sunset, which was also released before and different packaging and there's a fourth one that's kind of like all pastel and it didn't really interest me that much because I knew I'm going to probably think this doesn't have enough contrast um, but that is on the website if you want to get a closer look at it. That one's called So Bright Now. So let's first compare the Rose Gold Sunset. This is the original. Does anybody remember this kind of packaging? And then here is the new version. We can just put them side by side and you can see really they've kept so much the same. The second shade from the end is a little bit different for whatever reason. This one is darker in the original and then this is like just a little different shade. It doesn't have quite as much red in it. It's more of just a brown. But for the most part, the palette has just been repackaged. No mirror anymore and you're getting the clear window. Personally, I like to have the mirror. It's a slight step down. It's just a little cheaper feeling packaging. The look I did with Rose Gold Sunset was nice. I was pleased with it. I don't really have any complaints. I find these shadows to be soft, smooth, um, evenly pigmented. You're not going to get like a real patchy flakiness with the shimmers. There are quite a few shimmers in this, I will say. Out of the 10, you're getting a matte here, here, and then two more over here. So six shimmers, four mattes. I think you're going to find every shade is usable, workable. Everything does its job. I don't really have any complaints other than I kind of preferred the packaging with the mirror, but it's nice that they're still keeping that palette alive. Same with the Summer Breeze one. Here it's all matte. Now they had a really good cooler all matte option, and I'm surprised they didn't release that one as well. It was the original Mad for Matte. Really surprised they didn't go ahead and put that one out too. But this is the Summer Breeze, so 100% matte neutrals and getting into a little bit of warmth. I've always loved that there was a purple in here and there was kind of this toasty shade as well. I'll hold that up next to the original and I do see several changes with the new one. Um, they're not like massive changes, but it's like I feel like a couple things were maybe a 
little bit watered down. I like that the second shade from the end was a darker brown in the first one, and here they've lightened it up just a little bit, so I did prefer the darker brown. There's also a little bit of a difference here in these shades. There's a little more yellow in the new one, and here it was a bit more of a rich peach. Also in the original, this color showed more mauve, this one a little more brown. It's just a bit more muted. Now as far as the plums go, they're both nicely pigmented, really smooth. I really don't have a complaint, but the one in the new palette is just ever so slightly darker. So I'm picking up on multiple changes in that palette and not necessarily changes for the better. Doesn't make the new one terrible, but you know, if I had my preference, I really did like the way that original was. And something I found when I was using this, I kept thinking over and over, this would be a good beginner palette. Why? Because I think these mattes are very controllable. They don't kick up a lot of fallout and the pigment is not overwhelming. I mean, it's definitely something you can work with. You can get a beautiful look, but it's not like I'm putting my brush into, you know, an ABH shadow and getting just a lot of immediate color intensity. I felt like I was building up the darker shades a bit on my eyes. In the past, because also Hard Candy has been doing these 10 color palettes for years, I would have said, gosh, Elf's really got Hard Candy beat with what they're doing in these palettes. Now, I feel like Hard Candy's kind of stepped up their game and these are no better than what they're making and they're doing it for, I believe, a few dollars less. I will get on Walmart's website and check for sure. But the look I did with this one the other day, I thought, gosh, it came out beautifully smooth, but I was building, like with this darkest shade here and with some of the plum. My look doesn't have a lot of evidence of that plum, but I did use some as I was blending out my crease and it was smooth. It definitely didn't overwhelm me, but it did just take some building. Of the two, I feel like this one had the more like blatant pigmentation that you could really like pick up on. Oh, who's coming in? Up early. How are you guys? Our alarm just went off. Your alarm just went off? So that means it's reading time, right? Yes. They, oh, they see you, Biddy. Yeah, the Hard Candy palettes are selling for $5.97. Again, I think these used to be superior, but now things have kind of changed. And the one I have not yet used that I thought I would do a look with today with you guys is this Intergalactic one. So this would be the one that I have no previous comparison for. It seems like it's new this time around. Unlike the other palettes, you know, we had one that was all matte. We had one that had some nice smooth shimmers and also mattes. And now this one appears to have kind of a mixture of mattes, smooth shimmers, and some somewhat sparkly textures too. So I've already got my Milani eyeshadow primer on, and I think I'm going to just start with this little mid-tone brown right here just to get things going. We'll try that out in the crease. Now that's the same experience experience I had with the all matte palette. You put your brush in, you're not seeing a lot of excess kicking up, but as you can see, the shade is showing on the eyes. No issues so far. I'm getting that really like naturally shadowed look. Then let's work in some of this dusty rose second from the end. We'll get some of that going in. You can intensify a little bit. You know, she's a murky shade. I know I use that word a lot, but when I say that, I'm just meaning it's not like super pure. We're not getting pure rose. We're not getting a lot of pink. And plus we're blending it sort of over the top of that medium brown. And we're getting a nice kind of base thing happening. Just using my Profusion crease brush. Now what I would do is just kind of blend the edge with a bare brush. Nice and easy over the edge. And we have a really light matte white right over here, like a very bright white. So matte, 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 matte. Let's just pick up a hint of that and we can add a little. Okay, that white isn't quite as bold as she looks in the pan, but there we go. There's our matte setup. Um, maybe let's do a little bit of the black because I always like to test a black when I have a black. I'm gonna pick up some of that with my flat brush. All right, pleased with that pigment. Nice and dark. It's not requiring me to do a lot of building. We're just patting it on. I'm putting this on about the outer third of my eyelid and I'm feeling my brush touch my crease as I do this. So we're taking up all that space. Okie dokie. Then we can grab our small pointed brush and we can work that in the crease. 
just like so. And I don't have anything on this brush, but I'm just putting it in where I applied that black and I'm kind of helping it move a bit. If you want to, you can bring in that same crease brush you used if you want to work with a little bit larger brush. And you can just work on blending out that edge. I'm not raking it over the lid at all, but I'm blending out over the edge of that. So wow, we've got just a really kind of easy matte look going, but we've got some pops. We got some interesting things in this palette, so let's use those. We've got a real true blue here. What's going on with this? Okay, I just swatched it. Honestly, not quite as chunky as it seems. As I look at it here, I thought, oh, is this chunky glitter? No, it's actually hanging together more like just a really metallic shimmer, but it's almost like they broke it up a little bit to make it look more piecey, more like a glitter at a glance, but it's not. Um, this shade, very icy, wow. Um, we do have a purple there. Okay, I think I gotta work with that blue. Let's try it with a brush first just to see. I'm gonna try to pick it up with kind of a swiping motion and then we'll see if we can swipe on here. Okay, I don't think the brush is helping it nearly enough. I'm gonna have to use my finger on that. I kind of agitated back and forth, back and forth. Yep, that one takes the finger and I'm kind of letting it overlap my black a little bit and it's looking really pretty. Not fully, but just, you know, as we blend toward that side, it's overlapping some of the black. Oh, it's really neat. It's looking like as it shears out over lightness, it's looking like a turquoise and as it goes over the black, it's looking like just a deeper blue. It's a really pretty. Fans of blue, fans of sparkle people wanting to achieve some kind of a mermaid look. No, nope, this is the exciting one. Okay, y'all. Are you seeing where we're at with this now? Woo. I hope the camera's picking it up, but it's looking kind of two different ways. One way as it starts to overlap the black and one way as it comes inward. I think that's fun. I would like to apply a little bit of this super icy mint right beside it. That I think I will be able to pick up with the brush. It's just a little different texture. They're so going right here. Yeah, okay. And we're just gonna do that on inner corner, let it come to meet the other shade. I mean, it's downright dazzling if you're into these tones. I know not everybody will be, but if you're wanting to achieve blue, I do love that there's so much basic in here too that can pair with it, that can allow it to have some contrast. See, the, having that black there is what's really making this sing. I really don't think I would have liked the effect so much if I only went just straight blue across there. See what I mean? Really, really neat. How about we take a little bit of the black with small pointed and we just let some of that start to come on the lower lash line as well. I have a little bit on my brush and just working it inward. So the most product went out here and then I just kind of ease it on in. Don't grab for any more, just keep it soft. Other shades that didn't really get featured here in this palette, we have kind of a dirty bronze. We have like a very light icy pink shimmer. This shade right here could be interesting. It seems sort of sheer. It might be a little shifty. I'm not quite sure what to make of that. I have to see it on the eyes. But overall, yeah, this is your statement palette from ELF's uh, Perfect 10 range. I think you know if you're the type of person who wants to see this amount of color on your eyes. But that blue shade is totally workable and it's not a glitter. It's just a different textured shimmer and it does go on so much better with your finger. All right, so I'm gonna finish off this look with some mascara and find a lip color and we'll do a little recap. Okay, friends, here's what that looks like with some uh, CoverGirl Exhibitionist Stretch and Strengthen Mascara on the upper lashes and Cali Ray Come Hell or High Water on the lower lashes. My lip is Nude Heaven from the L'Oreal Glow Paradise line, just looking for something soft. I would have to say this one impressed me most out of these Perfect 10 palettes. I felt like the neutrals really did 
a good job with the setup and then those shimmers are just absolutely bold and bright. There were some I didn't get a chance to use today, but yeah, anybody wanting like a mermaid look, that's really what this makes me think of. This color is neat and shifty and as it overlaps something darker, it looks a little different as it comes over lightness. It's yet another kind of look. So I would have to say this was my favorite experience that I've had. The other two aren't bad and I, I really especially like the rose gold one. This one, it's just hard because they did this palette before and I think they did it a little better. There weren't major glaring changes, but just enough changes for me to kind of pick up on it. I feel like this just screams beginner to me because the shades are soft. There's a nice gradient with them, so it's hard to make a lot of mistakes with that one, I would say, so keep that in mind. Um, and this rose gold one I th just thought was very nicely balanced. It did a really beautiful look for me, but still, these are $10 10 shade palettes and you can get a really good 10 shade palette from Hard Candy for $5 and change. And really they've given us just a bit of a downgrade from before. These were kind of weighty palettes with a mirror involved here. Yeah, you can see straight through to the shadows, but I liked having that mirror. Again, we're in a so far so good phase with the liquid poreless putty primer. It has not disappointed me yet. I love the way it goes on. I've worn it with some foundations that I know to wear well on me and it hasn't screwed things up. The test going forward will probably be, can it help out some of those foundations? I have that maybe don't wear as well. So we'll see. But I would definitely give you the go ahead on these. I think the new lip exfoliators are great. I think that popcorn scent is quirky and fun and I really like it. Really like the coffee too. And I also, as I said, got that classic brown sugar one. I haven't busted into that yet, so I may save it. And I love this squeeze me lip balm too in the peach. Just a beautiful scent. I would be open to trying more of those. So yeah, guys, that's my elf haul. Thank you so much for watching. I will be testing out that putty eye corrector. I just need to get my hands on my right shade. So thanks again for your time and I will see you very soon. I love you. Bye.